morning. Welcome to Coffee with Christ. My name is Daniel Vasquez. I'm the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel Somme. And this is my beautiful, lovely wife, Laura, Laura Vasquez. So today we're going to finish up Exodus chapter 27. We're going to be talking about the lampstand. And then we're going to go into chapter 28. How you doing? How you doing, uh, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm Lisa. How you doing, Lisa? Miss you. <laughs> I heard you were at church. You are in the overflow, so I didn't get to say hi to you guys. They were together. What's up, Gil? How you doing, brother? You still alive? How you doing? How you doing, Brian? Hi, Connie. Jasmine. Wow. How you doing, Jess? Jessica Gonzalez. Jessica Gonzalez. Yes. So, just Good. to give you guys a quick update. Uh, what's up, Isaac? Or that's probably Monica. Hi, Monica. Oh, she, she has her own Hi, Pauline. Good morning. So, today we're here. Uh, we're in June, June gloom, huh? A little gloomy out here in Southern California. But we're going to have a beautiful day. What's up, Gil? Hey, hey, hey. Yes. So, how do you like, how do you like Laura's hair? Stop. I look at the hair. It's so beautiful. It's, it goes like this. It looks like little. Good morning. It's beautiful. Let's get started. I just, I just, I just like it. So, anyways, I know it took her a long time to cut her hair short. I've been telling her to cut it short. So, can you just tell her that it looks amazing? Can we get to the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> let's pray. All right. Yes. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for a beautiful day, Lord, as we get into your word. Father, again, just speak to our hearts. The power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, may we represent you well today. Lord, as we start a new day, today is the day, Lord, that you have made. We will, we will be glad and rejoice in you, Father. We thank you and we praise you. And we just commit the world into your hands, Lord, and we commit our lives into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, give you a little quick update. I got this. Um, this is from the uh, <clears throat> Fontana Police Department. And it's just a little update. COVID or coronavirus update. So San Bernardino County Public Health reported 7,515 positive cases. 7,515 positive cases. 228 deaths and 89, 89,923 uh, patients tested. So testing is going up. Mm -hmm. Um, the county has projected 4,600 patients have recovered. Yay! Thank you, Jesus. So, not everybody's dying. I know it's a pandemic. And um, I know we're fearful, but come on. We serve the living God. Bring on that coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Excuse me. Okay, maybe not. But anyway, he's like, come on. We need to We need to get out of our houses already, right? We need to... We need to get back in, in the world and go out and do our thing. But that's just an update. That's just an update. So I guess when you look at it for, as a whole, just San Bernardino as a whole, I guess your chances of getting coronavirus and dying are like 0 0.0000000010. If you're a healthy individual. Yeah. If you are, uh, even if you're not so healthy, we're seeing that people are recovering. So we yes. are in chapter 27 of Exodus, and we are in verse 20. So let's- Go ahead, baby. Let's read that. Run the uh, show, sweetheart, with your nice haircut. <laughs> and you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for light to cause the lamp to burn continually in the tabernacle of meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute to their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. You want to expound on that, babe? Yes. While we we're talking about <coughs> the the lamp, mm -hmm. the care morning. the care of the lampstand. Mm -hmm. uh, the care of the lampstand. We talked about the oil. So the oil for the lamps of the lampstand and the oil from the lamps of the lampstand the only light in the tabernacle 
Oh, it's an amazing thing, right? They only like so you know. And uh, I came from uh, pressed olives, pressed olives, not beaten olives. And Paul, he he says here, even as we think about uh, correlation and, and how we can apply that to our how to, we apply it to New Testament, um, pressed olive. So I'm thinking that's where Paul got his metaphor for in Second Corinthians chapter four verse eight. And Paul says here, bless you. Thank you. Uh, he says, we are hard pressed, kind of like that olive, right? We are hard pressed on every side, yet we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. Always caring about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Amen. So again, that's just a, uh, you know, um, you know, Paul, where he may have talked about just being hard pressed. This, this olive oil was hard pressed to produce this light that it was used in the, in the tabernacle. See, God uses our time in, of pressing uh, even for his glory. God uses our time of pressing even as his olive oil was pressed out to produce that light. See, God uses the pressing of our life to produce the light of Christ working through our life to the world. He says, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and give glory to our, to our uh, Father in heaven. Amen. So if you're feeling like you're pressed, it's because like this olive oil that produced that light, maybe God is trying to press you know, out his glory through your life. And it's through the pressure and through being pressed by the Holy Spirit that he's going to do that. Amen. So it's not always a bad thing. It's a great thing. So let God just go ahead and do his thing. And you go ahead and just illuminate the world with Jesus Christ. Well, here, if, if we look at what it's saying here, it says, you shall command the children that they um, bring you pressed, pure olive oil. They're not just talking about pressed olive oil because there's a difference between olive oils. Well, what's the difference, sweetheart? Um, there's one that's refined and it's this one is refined so that it's not, um, uh, it, it wouldn't be dirty. So it would go through an extra pure, refining. Pure. Yeah, go. it would go through an extra refining. And this olive oil would produce a brighter light without so much smoke because mm. this light was going to end up being in, remember, there's the tabernacle of meeting, and then there's the holy um, place, and then there's the most holy place. Mm -hmm. So this, it would be in the menorah. So the menorah, if we remember, it's opposite of the, of the table of the showbread or the consecrated bread. And um, it just gives you a picture that if this is the table, the menorah is directly across from it in the middle between the tabernacle of meeting where everyone mm -hmm. can gather and the most holy of holy. This is the center of the tent or the tabernacle where the light does not go out. If we read this here, it says, um, the olives for light to cause the lamp to burn continually, continually mm -hmm. in the tabernacle of meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony. Mm -hmm. What's the testimony? What are they talking about with the testimony? So, and Aaron's son shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever to their generations. Which mm -hmm. generations? Their generations that are going through the wilderness, moving the tabernacle in front of the testimony of the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. the Ark of the Covenant that God has asked them to build and consecrate themselves. Notice God is already electing a priesthood to tend the tabernacle. Who is to tend this continually? Well, it tells us he, God already assigned who's going to tend this light that it would not go out, mm -hmm. that it would stay on the whole time. That light was important because that was what was illuminating the only light in the center 
because if you think about it, when you open the, the door of the tent or you, the curtain of the tent, you have the light from the outside and the veil that's translucent that you could see in. When you enter deeper in to the center, you've got the two walls. You've got the tabernacle of meeting, and then you've got the holy of holies leaving the holy place dark. And so here this light would not go mm -hmm. out and it would be the light of the center of the tabernacle and the most holy of holies only the consecration of the priests could go in so it is a beautiful picture of that need that that light that middle place that sheds and welcomes in those who can enter from the tabernacle of meeting into consecration of the incense where the prayers are are and the um where where the the table of meeting so outside in the tabernacle of courts first you would have to take care of your sins and your burnt offering and and then you can come into the holy place if it was allowed so these are all statutes that that god is putting in place and saying this is important not letting this light go out do not let this light go out and the light was tended by the priests by those god who put there you know this is where i think about we are god calls us priests today right kings, we, and, priests. kings and priests today that our light would not go out and much more the light of those tending it to be ever so vigilant to not let it go out and um and that it would be brought not just any pressed oil not just anything goes into that lamp but the purest form to create the purest light without so much smoke if you think about that how many pastors or teachers today create smoke around the light we are not to create smoke mm. and the priests are to tend it yes and we are to bring the purest form so it is it to me it is a beautiful picture of god saying look in my in my house in my tabernacle in this is these are the statutes don't pollute the light don't make it smoky so um those are mine those are my takes. Yes. Wow. Amazing. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to kind of piggyback off um, what Laura was sharing, add a little bit more illustration and application to our life. When you look at that, um, it tells us here in this verse, who, who was to tend the light? And Laura talked about the priest. Well, who was the priest? Aaron and his sons, they, it says, shall tend it from evening until morning. So the priests, as Laura said, they were to tend the lamp, lamps. They would make sure that the lamps had oil to burn and that their wicks were trimmed so that the lamps would never go out, especially during, especially during the night. You see, now, as Laura talked about us being a light, God never, he never wanted these lamps to lose their fire. Only by continually supplying the oil trimming the wicks could keep them burning we can only as believers we can only be on fire for god if we are continually supplied with the oil of the holy spirit and are trimmed by god to purge us to trim us he the bible talks about uh, the the master of the garden, right? He he trims back the flowers, and it produces better flowers. So that pruning must take place in our life, and that's the only way we can we can keep on fire is if we allow the Lord to trim us, and to bear, and then in that we bear more light. We're living in dark days, very very dark days. I think that if we all were to talk, if we were all in a circle and we were to ask like just the climate of the world right now, very dark. It seems like a snowball effect. Well, it wouldn't seem so dark if you're comfortable and if you're okay. And if your fire's out. And if your fire's out and if you've, your eyes have grown accustomed 
to the dimness. Do you know that our eyes can grow accustomed to bright places or dark places? They will adjust. That you won't know sometimes even the difference because you can be so used to a certain type yes. of light that the darkness no longer seems so dark. Hmm. And we can get used to temperature that way. We can get used to so many things that way. But here yeah. God sets the statutes that are important. Yeah, you're right. It kind of reminds, reminds me of like when we get when you get into a bath and the water is at first really hot. It feels great. It feels amazing. But then your body gets used to it until you got to put it hotter. That's kind of what Laura's is talking about. And so again, in the dark days, in these dark days, as we're sharing and Laura's sharing, you know, that's all the more reason to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be trimmed, right? And, and to be the trimmed wicks for the Lord. And we're going through an awesome, amazing study right now th uh, through the Holy Spirit on Sundays. This next Sunday, we're going to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit. But we talked about the para, the Spirit coming in you when you receive Christ, the epi experience when it's overflowing. And then in that, how do we apply these gifts of the Spirit and then once we get done, we're going to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit. So, so this is what we're talking about. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, being on fire for Christ, being trimmed by the Lord. For, for it says here in um, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. To give the light of the of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, so um, this is this is uh, again, this is this is biblical. This is part of what God does in our life. He says in Ephesians five eight. For once you were in darkness, right? When we were Gentiles, when we were when we were worldly, when we were ungodly, we were we were once Gentiles. We were once in darkness. But now you are, you are light in the Lord, it says. Walk as children of the light. And that's what Laura was sharing. Light yourself on fire, they say, in <laughs> well, spiritual fire. And people will come from all over to watch you burn. So it's very important, even as we look at this, this uh, light uh, of the tabernacle and the importance of it and just the trimming and the maintenance and, con you know, uh, and the purpose of it. And just make sure your light doesn't get smoky. Yes. <laughs> like yes. Your light can be smoky. There could be um, pollution around your light. So even figuring out what the pure light is, what is that? How it's by learning your Bible, by going and, and realizing the tangible, I, I call this the tangible word of God. The menorah was tangible. It was 75 five pounds in weight and I was I was trying I was trying to figure out they say that um, here some people have drawn the menorah with legs um, to hold it like a tripod but they're saying that the menorah actually the bottom of the base I was doing a little bit of research was actually a triangle of solid gold which would make it solid for the weight that it was holding so it wasn't the legs Mm. So um, from what the historians are, are researching from different things that they're finding um, in archaeology and the drawings that um, coming across, but that it was a, a base of a, of a triangle um, for its support and not necessarily legs that we uh, traditionally see is as it being portrayed. So I thought that was an interesting fact on the menorah and, and its history. So... Yeah, there's a verse I want to share with you, and it's out of uh, uh, Luke. I mean, uh, I think it's out of, uh, give me one second here. It's out of John, John 16. And um, the Lord talks about, um, he talks about, actually it's in Luke. Let's see here. Yeah, Luke, it's in Luke chapter 8, verse 16. And it's the parable of the, of the, of the revealed light. And it says here, no one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with, with a vessel and puts it under a bed. But what does he do with that light? 
he sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to, um, and come to light. Therefore, take heed to how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and who, whomever does not have, even what he, what he seems to have will be taken from him. And uh, just really being responsible with the light that God has given to us and producing, uh, uh, well, putting it in, using it, utilizing, using that light, not putting it, not hiding it. And uh, how do you produce that light? You, how, did, how is that light produced in a believer? There's a parable that goes with that. Well, sure, that's what you heard. The parable of the, oh, I think it's in Matthew. Okay, why don't you look up the parable and I'll, I'll keep talking about this, right? So Laura's going to look up this parable, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking about this because, you know, it talks about, um, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known to come to light. And, and that is the first, I think, we're talking about being the light. We're talking about letting the light so shine through our lives. lives. Well, even in that, that Holy Spirit, that light that's in us, that illuminates us, is going to reveal to us, first and foremost, our hearts. It's going to reveal to us our bitterness is going to reveal to us our pains and we need to do something about it. You see, because what happens is we're going to quench the Holy Spirit if we don't take our sins to the light as God exposes our flesh to us by the light because he is the light as he dwells in us. If we, if we try to run from it, if we try to fight it, if we try to deny it, then what we're doing is we're putting, we're putting that light of Christ and we're hiding it. We're not letting it do its work in our life. You see, because that light should expose to us the things that we don't like to see. It says here, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. See, that's the thing about the Lord. He exposes everything. There is no, you know, I, I've heard it said, everybody has a skeleton in the closet. Well, you shouldn't as a believer because the reality is you may, you may be able to hide it from everybody else, but God sees your skeleton because it, there is no skeleton. You, you have a picture of a skeleton like the, the dark place, the, the darkness of you. Yeah, we, we have the flesh and yes, we have dark areas of our life that, that the enemy tries to bring against us. But as we have the light, it exposes those areas of darkness. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to do its proper work in our life, God's going to set us free from that. You see, what happens is when God exposes those things, we, we, we're like the gremlins. Bright light, bright light. We want to hide. Want to hide that. Just bring it to the light and let God do what he needs to do in your life to, and then give it to him. And let that light so shine that others may see God working through your life and give him the glory. Okay, here's All the right. parable that I... That There's my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> um, the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And it has to do with their lamps and their lights. And... Um, this is how a believer gets light or has light. So let me read this parable to you and then I will explain it. Um, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. So you have five wise and five foolish. Now those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So what happens? They didn't make provision. But the wise in their but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, but the bridegroom was delayed, and they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose. And what did they do? They trimmed their lamps so their fire wouldn't go out of control and burn so much oil. They were controlled. They were, they were thinking about taking more. They, they anticipated maybe there'll be a delay. I better take enough of this oil so that my light won't go out 
And now that my la I'm gonna light my lamp, I'm gonna trim the wick so it won't burn out of control and burn so much of the oil so it's consistent. So that the light and the burn of this lamp and this light is consistent. So here, they trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I don't know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. Now, the oil. The oil is the Holy Spirit that catches on fire. Mm. And the wick is that which controls the fire and they trim it. They keep vigilance that it would not go out of control. This picture of, of the lampstand and the picture of, of the foolish and wise virgins has to do with the Holy Spirit indwelling in us and making sure that we are feeding it the pure word of God so our light does not go out. So we have enough to make it through the dark nights and long unexpected waits that we have. You know, sure, we're waiting for our bridegroom. We're waiting for him. I'm looking up. I'm looking at the economies around the world. I'm looking at the governments around the world and thinking, hmm, the stage is set for there to be the perfect storm of a calamity that would come across the entire world where it, it could be now. Mm. And it could happen overnight, very much like our lives changed overnight with COVID. Like that. How? With COVID. One day you're working, the next day you're not. Mm. And they tell you, stay home. And now they're even dictating how much you can... It, it happens so quick. We think we're so free. Yet the only true source of of consistency that we have is the Holy Spirit. And I can't give you my Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit belongs to God and he freely gives it. But if we neglect it, if we don't spend time in the word, if we don't feed that fire with the Holy Spirit oil, our mm. lights and our vision will be dim. And if we don't trim our and if we don't trim our wicks and make sure that we're not out of control, there could be a lot of smoke mm -hmm. out there because of your lamp. Or a lot of burning out of control. Or my lamp. The Bible talks about. So this I, I love this parable and the correlation to the light because let your let your light so shine that the world may see Christ in you. And it goes back to this. Where was this light, this lamp stand? It was in the center after repentance and the sacrifice was made in the tabernacle of meeting then in the center that light was there and that oil and that light was burning continuously and tended by the priests meaning mm. if you think about it who tends your light when you go to church when you hear the word of God you are trimming your wick and if there's too much smoke in that preaching, then you we need to be able to discern. That's that. right. Yeah, get that preacher. That's right, buddy. Yeah. You better be good. <laughs> and and that's that's the Lord dealing. You know, we are to be vigilant, giving the purest form, which is the word of God. We now know that the Holy Spirit is the oil that gives the light to the believer and symbolically represents that tangible Holy Spirit that we can't see or touch. But yet, in the Bible, God gives us tangibility. I love the fact that I can take a walk in the mountains and hear. Not only do I hear the stream, I could smell it. I could 
smell the dampness of the earth. I could smell the rotting leaves. I could, it is, it, I could feel some of the moisture mm. in the air. All of my senses are completely intact and aroused when in the nature and aspect of God's creation. Yet, here we are. God's important word. Trim our wicks, keep that oil, and us believers keep our oil by staying in the word, praying to God, looking at the construction of the tabernacle, having that table meeting with God, mm. repenting and taking daily account of where we are with the one we love. Amen. Amen. Yes. And, and wow, we're just going to, Laura talked about this fire one and you guys can all relate to being around a bonfire and it's kind of going out right it's like who wants to be around that if you add some more wood to the fire then you add so much wood to the fire right you, let's say you put a whole pallet put two pallets on there right two pallets i mean that's that is a, not a pure form of wood <laughs> no and all of a sudden it's con it's burning out of control right so so we want to we want to have a balance we want to have a balance and the way i look at it is Paul Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians and and he says 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and this is one of my life verses this is really something that I I this is this is something that I take personally. This is how you trim your wick? So this is how I trim my wick. Yes. <laughs> Since my wick. we're talking about a lamp. Yes. And and Paul Paul puts it in a perfect content and it's amazing. It's just something like I said for me it's personal. So I take it very personal. Um, and it's, he says here in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, he says, do, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? So then you run like, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And he says, in, uh, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it for, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. And so therefore run thus way, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. You see, that's that's when the fire is going out of control. It's not really a being effect, effective. And and so Paul's talk, you know, talking about, this is how we, this is how we compete. This is how we, he says, so we don't want to be those believers as Laura was sharing, those pastors who are blowing a bunch of smoke, those Christians who don't need to wear a mask because they do every day and they're called hypocrites. We don't want to be those Christians. Well, we all can be hypocrites at one point or another. That's why Christ died, right? Yes. We're all, and we're that's all why, sinners. But that's why we got to constantly trim our wigs. That's why we constantly have to be in the Word. Constantly, yes. right? Because we can all be that. But he says, that's why he's saying, we don't want to fight. If we're going to, if we're going to spend our energy, if we're going to light a fire, we want it to produce what it's made to produce. And in that, we don't well, want it's, to. It's, it's, it's thoughtful. It's, it's maintenance. You're trimming so that you would not have an out of control burn and too much smoke added to the pure. Well, if we go back to the menorah, it talks about the pure oil that is to be pressed mm -hmm. and refined. Because that pure oil produces less smoke inside mm. the holy place. Yes. And, um, and in the holy place is where the incense would be lit, which is symbolic of where the prayers are being mm. symbolically displayed of all of the nation of Israel. And we haven't gotten to that part yet, but um, God, God even is so... It's amazing to me how even the way the priest dressed, he gave them outfits. He gave them colors. Uh, you know, I was talking to a friend and I was telling her, I'm like, I'm not so sure about God's um, colorful palette of colors and said the tabernacle. It was like blue, purple, uh, scarlet thread, um, yes. goat's hair, onyx stones, red. So you start to think about these are deep, deep colors. You don't see any like white or it's it's these vibrant statement colors that God uses and decides to use inside the tabernacle. 
And um, to me, it's just interesting because even the description of when he's on the holy mountain, the sapphire emerald like a sky mm -hmm. on the mountain that the children of Israel got to see. These are God's designs yes. and picks for how his tabernacle should look and then mm -hmm. how his how his priest he wants them to dress. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I know every time yeah. somebody goes to, um, when you go to seas, they're always in the white smocks. Like, it's very sterile. It's this look. Or in and out. Or in and out. They have, but here God has his his uniform oh. and his statues <laughs> for... for um, kind of like hot dog on a stick, right? Yeah. <laughs> With the red and the yellow. Yeah, but God has his. His are sacred. And they're consecrated. Yeah. So we, we should stop here with the oil. Yeah. Well, and you've already gone into the priest's outfit. Might as well just read it. And that way we can just keep moving forward. It's already 845. We have to um, so in closing it, okay, when you look at all this stuff and we're going to look at the clothes and we're going to look at the ephod, and it really just comes down to order. It comes down to... You think about even maintaining everything the way God desi desires it to be maintained. There had to be individuals to do that. You think the priest and his uh, Aaron, there had to be a discipline uh, to that lifestyle. And God was disciplining his people through structure and through worship and through, uh, you know, service. And in that, that kind of leads me back to what Paul says. In our fighting and in our running in this race as believers, Paul says, I, I, here's what I do. And this is, this is Paul's words. He said, but I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should, should become disqualified. And, and so, you know, to, to make all this happen, there, there was a discipline in putting on that outfit, a discipline of, you know, uh, trimming that candle, lighting the candles, everything that took place just to worship God. And there's a discipline. Uh, as believers, if we we want to exercise the Holy Spirit, we want to. There's a discipline that it's going to take me to get in my Word, to get up every day, and to live the life that God's call, called me to run the race that God's called me to run, to worship God. All this takes discipline, uh, and I think that yes, we have freedoms, but you know, as we're talking about our lights, we're talking about all these things. The reason why a lot of us are being defeated is because we're not disciplining our lives in Christ. We're not disciplining getting in the Word. We're not disciplining praying. We're not disciplining our schedules. And Paul understood that. He says, listen, I need to discipline my body and I need to bring it. I need to have control over my emotions. I need to have control over this, this fleshly body because, because when I want to read the Word, my flesh is going to go into wanting to go to in and out you know, or whatever the, whatever the is or you're in or, a daydream. <laughs> or you're going to want to watch it. You're going to want to binge watch a TV show yeah. and not go to church. And so what Paul's saying, I need to discipline my body. I need to bring it into subjection. So less when I have priests to others, I myself should become disqualified. And so not taking it for granted. I would just encourage, encourage us, you know, the trimming and, and producing that oil and all everything to make this worship service take place. There was a discipline. It was a discipline, and I would... Well, it wasn't just a discipline. It was an honor to be chosen to keep the light. You know, I think we forget what an honorable and sacred God we serve and how wonderfully privileged we are to be forgiven and to have such mercy bestowed on our lives. And then not just mercy, mm -hmm. but the blessings that come from the mercy that is received. Yes. You know, because of the sacrifice. Here they're sacrificing animals and they set it up so that it's all burned and consecrated. Yeah. But for us that are believers and Gentiles, we know that our Christ came down from heaven and was sacrificed and was beaten to a pulp so that we could enter the most holy of holies and the presence of God can be in our midst. How do you do that? The Holy Spirit, you've already repented. You've asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it's been paid. And now you can enter the sweet fellowship of knowing God and reading his word and having his word speak to you. When I read this word, it comes alive. You know, um, I can visually see when I'm reading Exodus, the lamp stand. And if it's the trims are 
if the wicks aren't trimmed and, and the priests don't have the reverence, then the light is smoky and it's not yeah. so bright and it won't have the effect that it's supposed to. Yeah. And that goes, that's a very high calling yeah. for all those who teach and preach because that means that your life is weighed in the balances and is looked at. Yes, mercy is bestowed and we serve a holy God, but we are all accountable. We all have access to that Holy Spirit. And if we are not vigilant like those foolish virgins to take care of filling up on the oil and making sure that that's good, when the bridegroom comes in the middle of the night and that shout of the archangel comes out, I can't give you my Holy Spirit. You'd have to get your own covering. And that's scary. So let's not let's not let our lights go out and the light that we do should let it let it not be smoky. Mm, yeah, let's not and blow let's, a bunch of smoke. Let's end there. And yeah, let's pray. yeah, they don't want to be smoky. Okay, Is that why you trimmed your hair? Because you wanted to have like a trim, like a to... <laughs> No, no, I trimmed it because it was it was uh trim up the wick. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was more like before, straw hair. Before we pray, uh, a couple of things. On Mondays, we're probably not going to be doing the uh, devotions on Mondays. We won't be. Um, um, and we may make some adjustments. A lot of people are going back to work. I know my wife um, may probably be having to go back to work. Yes. Unfortunately, here uh, in the next, I don't. We don't know when, but it just seems like more. Uh, you know, as a COVID, uh, they're starting to uh, stage two, stage three. Uh, people are starting to come out little by little. And so with that, we're going to have to see how we get these devotions. Yes, we're, we're going to still do it somehow, some way, maybe in the afternoon, but we will we'll definitely connect with you. Uh, this is amazing. We love it. It definitely brought us closer together. Um, and I enjoy it. Have you enjoy it, babe? I've enjoyed it, but I see BJ and Janet just joined. Or yes. Janet, BJ's and, been watching. Hi, BJ. Yes, so and we enjoy you guys. We definitely enjoy you guys. I know we have John Vigil also um, yeah. on as well. So... Um, yeah, so if you guys have any prayer requests, some of you we haven't seen, and we definitely miss you guys. I know John and Lydia, we, we definitely are praying for you. Janet as well. Um, but, uh, you know, just so you know, again, uh, Quarantine Couples in Christ, uh, Christ Talk, we're, we're be in prayer. We're, we have a, we may do, um, it may be uh, the Rock Hills, uh, Matt and his wife. Um, so be in prayer about that. And we'll, we'll be back in Proverbs on Wednesday night, so we'd love to see you guys as That's well. tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Um, and, but we'll, we'll see you tomorrow morning. So with that, uh, yes, let's go out and, and set the world on fire for Jesus, and let's not uh, blow a bunch of smoke. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So, babe, you want to pray us out of here? Sure. Dear Lord God, I lift this up to you, all those who are watching and will watch. Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit indwell us, that the oil that it, the foolish virgins in chapter 25 of Matthew, Lord, that they would read and understand what that means. And here in the holies of holies, as we're reading how they are to tend and what kind of oil they are to put in that lampstand, Lord, and that the light would not go out. Lord, I pray that for ourselves as believers and searchers of truth and searchers of your presence and your knowledge and your wisdom, God, that all this would be ingrained in the souls of our hearts and our mind, that we would trim our wicks to not burn out of control and that we would keep a constant walk mm. of faithfulness to you, being vigilant that you're coming and that we are not to be laxed in our concern of that. And Lord, with that, we praise your holy name. May you bless all those who hear. And Lord, we ask you that you would just be with us and that you would have mercy on this world and that there would be a revival and an opening of your eyes that people would see the smoke and through the smoke and they would call on your name and seek you and your sweet presence and your good pleasure over them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, guys, God bless you. Have a great day. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Or maybe today. All right. Have a good day.